Hey guys, Andrew here with Full Dark Art. I uh, just wanted to pop in, kind of try out a voiceover video today. We're doing a paint with me in mostly real time of Major Warren from The Hateful Eight. As we tape up the page here, I kind of want to get into why I'm posting this video. What I've seen mostly on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram is this kind of filtering of an artist's work. Everybody gets into this habit of only posting all the good stuff, and it makes it so everyone feels like they just could never possibly be as good as all of these people. I by no means am a, an amazing artist. I'm more a cartoonist. I can stylize things. I can kind of make up goofy characters and, and things like that. I'm not a portrait artist. Faces are, are difficult for me. Things like that. But uh, a lot of times you go on to someone's videos and, and everything is, is a masterpiece. You don't usually see the, the ones that could have been done better. And that's kind of what I wanted to show today. This sketch, first of all, that you're seeing in high speed is not the best. And as most art teachers would tell you, you can't build something on top of a poor foundation. The foundation for this one was not good. Um, I didn't know where the facial features were going. Like I said, I'm not a portrait artist. I'm just using the reference photo, which you can find in the description, and trying to find shapes. Following his arm down here after going around his hand, finding that outline, everything like that. I'm just finding basic shapes. I tend to work especially in acrylics, which I'll be using for this piece. Very impressionistic. I don't have a lot of detail. I will try to get things done in as few brush strokes as I can. Most things are almost just a base coat for me. I'm sure that'll change as my skill level evolves right now. Like I said, I'm I'm very much just starting out with this. So, as we go through the sketch here, you can see I'm just kind of darkening up some of the, the lines that I felt a little more confident about. But still, God, as you could probably see from the thumbnail, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some ridiculous thumbnail for this because he, he honestly, he looks ridiculous. He is a, a potato and a hat and, and cape. But uh, I did not do Samuel L. Jackson justice in this one. So as we get through the the end of this sketch here, we'll get into some of the painting, and you'll kind of see where I'm starting to hit a wall um, where the the sketch wasn't doing enough for me to help me out in the painting process and because of that it just got more and more difficult i could not see the the light at the end of the tunnel so this one could have been done a lot better had i taken some more time on the sketch gotten the face to the point where i felt comfortable with it i think i would have been much better off and if that were the case I think I would have had a better time come time to paint. You'll see me pretty often as I'm painting, as I stop to have an energy drink here, because everyone runs on caffeine now. As I'm painting, I'll tend to take breaks um, where I'm just kind of staring at this piece a little bit. I, I haven't cut many of those out. I've left some of them in 
so you can kind of see where I get a color mixed or I am trying to figure out which color to mix and then kind of struggle figuring out where to place it. So after picking out my colors there, we're going to get to laying them out on the palette. Start with the white. I actually put out a decent amount of paint. This is a really small painting, but I'm still getting used to these acrylics. So we'll just go with a white, yellow, red, blue, and brown for now. I'm trying to learn to mix colors, make what I need from a basic limited palette. So there's quite a bit of color mixing in this video that I do to try to get a few different shades for yellows and then skin tones and then the the darker purples and purpley browns that I'm using for blacks. You can see as I go into paint, I do try to find just big areas. I'm using a big flat brush just to kind of land some color in the spots that that need it. The thing that drew me to this particular screen grab is the the yellow of his kind of the underside of his cape or his jacket, whatever whatever it is that he's wearing. That bright yellow against the like dark dark blue almost black of his jacket is what struck me. But the bigger discussion here is kind of YouTube, TikTok, Instagram as a whole, and artists cherry-picking their work. And I don't want to be like that. You know, I had planned on making this paint with me of this screen grab from The Hateful Eight and got through filming the entire thing and realized... My god, this thing looks awful. And as I sat, I kind of wondered, well, now now what? Do I I can start something else and I can I can make something that looks good, I can do something more cartoony, but what does that serve? It only serves me. I'm going to stroke my own ego with good comments and and things like that, but I would rather people be able to see the process of someone learning and this to me is more important than a perfect painting to see the process of of learning and of doing something wrong you can learn so much more and i understand that like a lot of times like big big names and people putting out perfect works Obviously, that's a thing. Everybody wants to see amazing artwork, and it's inspirational to see like these pieces that you know only one person could possibly create. Was I hoping for that to happen with this? Of course, I was. I was hoping this was going to come out amazing and it was going to look really good, but I'm not quite at the skill level where I can pull it off. This was a challenge for me to attempt something a little more difficult. So getting 
major colors down and getting the values correct was tough. Again, I'm still learning. All artists, I think, should be learning, and you should always be in a state of learning, but but I'm really not happy with this piece. It's It came to a point where I was putting in final touches and just kind of slapping snow over everything at the end and didn't really like the way it looked. I kind of just cut it cut it off and was like, okay, you know what? I'm 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 done with this. Let's move on to to something else. And that's exactly what I did. I moved on. I took the the lesson that I'd learned from from making this and kind of went, well, that didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. What could I do differently? Could I spend more time on the sketch? Of course I could. That would be the best thing for me. Improve the sketch. It's going to improve the final painting. Acrylics don't often work in acrylics. Watercolor is usually what I use. I realized most of the way into drawing this one that I had used a pretty heavy hand with my mechanical pencil that I was using. So I figured I'd go over it with acrylics, just kind of get rid of some of those pencil lines. Figured it would be a, a better way of creating this scene. Also, the added snow over the top is obviously much easier with, with acrylics to just go in after with some some grayish white and, and different things like that to add snow over the top of something. And having to leave white spots and watercolor on something like this to get a snow effect would be a nightmare. But hopefully, through me kind of just posting this anyways... I can encourage you guys to just kind of get dirty, get into your sketchbooks, do something. The fact that I sat down and I actually painted this is a win. The fact that I took the time to open up my supplies, to get my sketchbook out, to mix up some different colored paints, to even attempt to get values and you know spend all this time mixing up this this gray for the gloves and things like that. The fact that I was even capable of sitting down and attempting it, a majority of human beings would never even touch that. So all I really want this to do is kind of motivate you to just do it. Just to sit down and, and spend a little bit of time, if you're just using pencils, pick up a pencil and a piece of paper and and just draw. If you're using paints, grab your paints. Go sit and paint. Even if you don't have an hour or however long it took me to do this, obviously the videos the sped up a little bit and cut out some points where things were a little a little wonky, but if you even if you don't have a lot of time just doing anything is learning and that was the big thing for me this was a learning painting and that's exactly what the sketchbook's for it's to learn it's to push myself and that's i think what happened with this one i pushed myself and did i realize i pushed myself too far yeah of course i did but at the same time had i not what am i going to learn Doing something that I've done, you know, hundreds of times before or something that I'm comfortable with is useless because I know how to do it already. If I knew how to paint this perfectly, why would I paint it and just, you know, record the whole thing, put a voiceover on top of it and slap it, send it out to YouTube and just sit back and collect, you know, likes and subscribes. That's not what I want to do. I want more meaningful content. So I am posting this one rather than another painting that I did right after to show that not everything needs to be perfect. And I hope that you guys can take that away from this video that you know, not every single thing in your sketchbook needs to be amazing. Not every single piece of art you 
create has to be groundbreaking. It's okay to make something that stinks. Something that you hate. Something that made you feel uncomfortable doing it, creating it. Because if you put yourself in that position of feeling uncomfortable while you're creating something, you're creating something different that you've never created before. And that's the important part. So as we go through the rest of this painting, I want you guys to just remember that. And if you're going to paint along, go ahead and paint along with the rest of it. I'm going to leave you guys with some music, and I hope you enjoy your day, your night, or whatever it is where you're at. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.